Hey guys, it's Rindy here once again, back at you with that new sort of casual series I mentioned. And the first thing you're probably thinking is, oh great, another Snowflake Iron Man series. And yes, you are 100% correct. But this one's a little bit different. It has a little bit of my own twist and masochism tied into it. Anyways, it's not gonna be your ordinary landlock restriction. This one's going to be a little bit more complex. And the restrictions for this account specifically are that I can't trade XP or GP for any items unless they are untradeable. The things this account cannot do are buy items out of the shop for GP because that's exchanging GP for an item unless it's untradeable. Another thing this account cannot do is just pick up resources from mining and woodcutting and all of those activities because I am getting XP for the items that are attributed to my inventory. Therefore, as soon as I get a resource like a log or a fish, as long as it's tradable, I will have to drop this item. As well, I can't pick up drops from NPCs because I am using combat XP to kill that NPC. Therefore, I can't actually loot any monster drops unless zero XP is given while killing the monster or unless it is an untradeable drop, such as a clue scroll or a very specific untradeable item. This means the only way I can truly get items is from spawns on the ground, things like clue scrolls because those are untradeable, quest rewards, mini games like Barbarian Assault or Soul Wars that give items that are tradable with zero XP required in actually performing the mini game tasks, or just from purely untradeable items. And you might already be saying, this is just stupid. And that is correct, it is. So without further ado, I introduce you to scavenger man mode, or whatever you want to call it, I don't even have a real name for it yet, you guys can decide actually in the comments, maybe we can call it garbage man mode because I'm picking up the trash all around RuneScape doing my due diligence to get the pollution levels down inside of this game from all these random item spawns on the ground. I don't know yet what we're going to call it, but I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. Before we get into the insanity of this episode though, I want to introduce you to our sponsor for today's video and that is Manscaped. It's a new year, so it's a new you. And that is why my friends at Manscaped hooked me up once again with all the right tools and formulations designed specifically for men. They gave me the Performance Package 4.0 kit and it's just your all-in-one head-to-toe men's grooming and hygiene kit. The feature product of this package is the Lawnmower 4.0 and it seriously is amazing. It has advanced skin safe technology to avoid nicks and cuts in your very sensitive areas. And of course, I've shown this before, but this is cordless and waterproof so you can use it with ease in the shower and once you're done there's even a wireless charging dock where you can just set this thing down on and bam there you have another up to 90 minutes of full use on a full charge which i know you'll need this package will also make you smell nice it comes with a crop preserver ball deodorant and the crop reviver ball toner spray i use both of these all the time trust me your balls will thank you your girlfriend your wife will thank you there are so many more things in this package like the weed whacker which is a nose trimmer there's also a travel bag and anti-chafing boxer briefs so what are you waiting for start off your new year right head over to manscaped.com get 20 percent off plus free international shipping plus two free gifts when you use the promo code RENDY at checkout. All right, so here we are, technically on my second Snowflake account I've ever made. I wanted this to be something different, something new, and something that no one's really ever done before. And I think the concept itself is a little bit cool. Oh, just a little bit cool, not entirely. Uh, because it's another snowflake account. Everyone's kind of bored of this shit probably by now, but uh, you know what? We're gonna do it anyways. This is obviously the more casual series I was mentioning. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna see how this goes. I'm going into it kind of blind, um, but I'll find new things along the way. And I don't even really know that many item spawns in the game. So this is going to be extremely interesting for me at least, if not for all of you. So let's get started. First super weird fact from this likely super long Rindy progress series I'm about to make is that these logs here are actually untradeable. So this is a benefit to the account already because since these are untradeable I can keep them and get my fire making up here till level 3. Also if you didn't know these trees are actually a lot quicker XP because they are like set, they're a set stall like I can't do anything while I'm chopping this tree. It's a set amount of time to actually chop it down whereas if you're chopping down like a a normal tree you could be you could be spending like five minutes attempting to chop that tree down so especially at one wood cutting so this is a little bit different um, but also there are going to be a few exceptions here on tutorial island because obviously like for example when I mine the copper and tin later I'm going to literally have to use it on the furnace to get through the next step to actually play the account so I guess that's gonna be pretty much the only exception from this account uh, 
ever is going to be smithing a bronze bar on Tutorial Island. I would I would hope so at least. Luckily, uh, this cook here gives us the bread for free. I should have taken more dough from him. I'm, I've already failed this. I think if I dropped it, he could have given me more. I could have gotten free three cooking. Oh my god. I think the world's gonna end now. I gotta restart. Do Dork's quest for fast mining XP. Well, I can't keep uh, tradable items on me like these, for example. I'm supposed to actually drop these items anytime I get a tradable that's been farmed with XP or GP. I'm supposed to drop it, but like I said, to get to the next step in this tutorial island here, I'm gonna have to make this uh, bronze bar, so I'm gonna have to keep at least one of each of these things, just because it literally, I cannot get off this island and go to the next step without it. There's no way. Imagine if I... I wanna see what happens if I drop this dagger. Will he make me go make another one? Because I really shouldn't have this thing at all. It took me XP to make this thing. This is cheating. Never mind. I don't even have to cheat. He gives me another one right here if I drop the one I just had. So technically, he gives me this dagger without me ever having to get any smithing XP to make it. That's actually super handy. I don't know what this dagger is going to be useful for since I'm about to outclass it anyways with the sword and shield. But um, yeah, I guess I can sell it to the general store. There used to be a way to smuggle a bunch of arrows out. Unfortunately, that has been patched or else this would be a free range training method for the account. There's no way to do that anymore. So I'm gonna have to rely on training arrows for the start of the account. And I think there is a bronze bolt spawn in the wilderness and a bronze crossbow spawn that I might have to rely on to train range up for the first few levels of this account. All right, so let's not kill the rat. Not a hop world. So if you don't kill the rat, you don't have to progress to the next step, and if you do kill the rat, it won't let you range the rat anymore. So that's why I'm trying to get just as much XP here as I possibly can while I'm getting free arrows given to me with no XP or no GP in exchange here. Okay, that is three range. All right, so I'm not sure if this guy's gonna stop me casting mage after I strike a chicken. So I'm gonna get a lot of these ruins here at least for three magic. See, there was even another manip you could do. This was only like a six months ago. There was a separate tutorial island you could go to. It was really weird. If, if the world was overpopulated, it would send you to this separate like instance tutorial island. And you could take these runes here and go back to the rats and get like as much magic as you wanted to. It would give you splash XP. It would constantly give you magic XP past even level three with the base magic stats. My friend even had an account with like 50 magic, like 20 combat on Tutorial Island. It was pretty hilarious, but I don't think that works for the normal mode here. And I don't even think for the instance one, I think they finally fixed it. I don't even think you can get on the instance one anymore. I don't know. Um, but if I'm going to see if I can go back down to the rats and just get some free magic XP and see what happens here. Those ruins are hard to come by. I'm going to have to pick them up at spawn points. So if this actually works, I'm probably going to actually sit here till like 50 magic. Moment of truth. Can I get over three mage here? And nope, it, it no longer works. So I don't even get base magic XP after three. I'll be a hardcore Iron Man on this account, by the way, but I don't really care about the, the game mode as much. I'm just going to start off with it. Um, I'll probably make a terrible mistake early on, possibly even in this episode. So don't expect much. All right, let's head to the mainland. He's going to scuff my inventory up a bit here. I'm going to have to remember what to drop. He first takes it away and then puts it back. The arrows were pretty much given to me. You know, I guess you can argue that all of this was given to me since he literally took my inventory away and gave it back. So I'm just going to roll with it. Um, Because I didn't make those shrimp myself. You know, I didn't make that bread myself. Fuck it. Man. All right, and then I'm going to claim some of this. Claim some of that, claim some of this, let's go. I can't get any more ruins right now, but uh, that's okay. I can already cast Confuse, luckily since I trained to three magic, so that's always good. I'm gonna go ahead and confuse some of these ducks over here, get some free mage XP while we're here. Now, I don't wanna range these ducks because um, obviously I can't get my arrows back if I throw them into a river, and I kinda wanna pick up arrows. Damn, I got a stack of ducks here. I was going to go upstairs and pick up the bronze pickaxe, but I really don't need it since I was technically already given one. I was originally thinking I had to drop the inventory, but yeah, now that I, I think about it, the guy literally took away my shit and then gave me a bunch of new shit. I don't think I'll need this dagger. It's definitely not my best in slot. It's got less of everything. All right, so we're going to... I don't know what the fuck I'll ever need this GP for. Maybe some kind of untradeable I can buy out of a shop, like some kind of food. 
But I'm going to go ahead and, and sell this dagger because I really don't ever need that for a nice solid four coins. Our first stack of coins on the account. I was thinking about doing Cook's Assistant. I, this sounds like a joke, but um, I can make the flour without getting an XP. I can get the egg without getting an XP. Bucket of milk. I, everything. Yeah, okay. I can get everything without the XP. So let's go ahead. Fuck it. Let's do Cook's Assistant while we're here. Oh my god, there's a Mind Ruin spawn right here. I forgot about this. Oh yes, we already have 10 airs in our inventory as well. This could actually be good. I'm going to hop around and get a few more of these uh, Mind Ruins. I'm still left 2P. I'll bond the account here in a second. Don't worry. This isn't a temporary account. I, as long as I don't get banned. I plan to actually use this account uh, quite frequently. You know, now that I think about it, something I do need that's untradeable um, that this GP will come in handy for is the Chronicle. The Chronicle pages for teleports. On a side note, I can't even do sheep shear because I need a pair of shears unless there's a shear spawn somewhere. Give me this egg though, I need this egg. I'm gonna get some free cooking XP while I can. Technically anything I fish, um, I have to drop on the floor because that was given to me through XP so I can't actually uh, use anything from that. I can't use monster drops like these chickens because I exchanged XP for the monster drop uh, for the raw chicken. I literally don't know how I would train cooking. Something with a spawn somewhere. Um, or like making flour like I am now and pulling water out of a well. <laughs> Fuck. Reforming it into dough because the dough doesn't give XP. That's gonna be rough. Oh man. So any kind of cooking requirement right off the top of my head literally forming pots of flour unless there's a pot of flour already made spawn and that's what's gonna be have to be done this guy's got the right idea i'm gonna try and just get x marks to spot out of the way while we're here i'm not even sure what i would use the reward lamp on for x marks to spot and all the shade all the spade spawns are so far away i guess there's drainer manor all right that's cook's assistant completed i've realized um one of the quests I can do that I've never actually done in this game yet, it's a newer one, Below Ice Mountain. I can mine this thing called... Yeah, Baronite Shards and go inside to this, like, maze and pick get these lock boxes for zero XP and then open them um, for possible reward loots. And that would be super handy because there is so many rewards from these things and the Baronite Shards themselves are untradeable so I can keep them and I can use them to get access to that maze. So it's gonna be super handy. I will have to get a few things first. I'll have to get some mining up first. So I do need a knife for this quest. I need 16 quest points somehow. So it's a good thing I already started with Cook's Assistant. Um, and I'll have to find other quests I can do that I can actually get the items for. Another thing I realized, this quest requires beer, and I was thinking beer, you know, like, the only place I can think of getting beer from is from, a, like, a, a pub, and they sell it for money, and I, that means I really can't do that. So, I was very scared, but apparently there is a spawn for beer in Barbarian Village, and also this quest requires cooked meat. And I was like, oh shit, I can't even cook meat, because that gives XP, I would have to drop the meat. But... There is a cooked meat spawn in Barbarian Village as well, so two in one right there. I can actually, I believe, do this quest and then get the mining up and I can go inside that maze and loot these lock boxes. <laughs> one food I just realized I can get is a potato. A raw potato heals one HP. Potato, a cabbage, any of that good stuff I can actually use. I'm gonna pick a few potatoes here since I'll be heading into the manor. As well, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the security stronghold real quick. Because if I do that, I can get the 10k coins, and then I can come back to Draenor here, and I can buy the Chronicle with that GP since it is an untradeable and some pages. This is super fun. Oh my god. See, that tree already took me down for three damage. Good thing I have raw potatoes to eat, am I right? Shears! A shear spawn! We were just talking about sheep shear. We can do sheep shear for quest points too. Hell yeah, we get some crafting XP based off that too. This place is just full of goodies, isn't it? I've also found a cheese spawn here. This is actually probably my... Ooh, a tomato spawn too. Maybe I can make more food and cook more than I thought I could, but it's gonna require a lot of effort. Okay, so the tomato and the cheese are actually our best healing item we can, like, continuously require right now. They heal 2 HP each, so uh, that's a start. Better than the potato with 1 HP that I was looking at. So I'm gonna go ahead and use all my arrows while I'm here. I can get more arrows um, as soon as I use these up, so I have, like, probably 15 minutes left on the timer. I might as well, you know, get some range XP while I can. And these seagulls are the best thing to get XP on at this low of a level because they actually have negative defense and they always hit zeros on you. So that's what I'm going to be training on until I run out of these arrows real quick. And then I'll probably go ahead and head to the security stronghold. 
So I was actually thinking about at around um, nine, I, th I don't remember what the requirement is, nine range or something like that. I could switch to a Blurite crossbow since it is technically untradeable and I could make Blurite bolts. But there's a problem with that theory because I cannot actually get the crossbow string, um, at least from what I've read on the wiki. Unless you guys know of a way to get a crossbow string without making it from Sanu with XP, uh, you know, that would be helpful, but I don't think there is a way to get one. So we're gonna be stuck with the shitty ass training bow until at least 40 range. And then I might try and do some medium clue steps in order to get like a U long bow or a U short bow. And then I can actually start Temple of Ikov to pick up the ice arrow spawns which require the U-Bow to use. Ah, it's so nice and calming killing innocent birds on the beach. All right, we've got two arrows left and we've been able to actually get up to seven range, so I'm gonna call it there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and head back to Lumbridge now, claim some more arrows, and then I'm gonna go ahead and set an authenticator on this account, talk to the count, go to Edgeville. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm also gonna go ahead, and, now that I have a spade, and start up x marks the spot while i'm over here i decided to go ahead and do some more steps in restless ghost quest and we got another untradeable and that is the ghost speak amulet and technically that's our only necklace i think we can acquire for quite some time so we're gonna be repping that it looks pretty sick it's got a skull on it actually we're close to drainer now so i'm gonna go ahead and finish up x marks the spot i'm still not sure what i want to use that xp lamp on i feel like there's some skill that's going to be really fucking hard to train that i don't even know of yet so I might just uh, destroy it and come back for it whenever I actually need it. Um, I'm trying to think if smithing is one of those skills because I'm looking... Well, luckily from these, uh, these pick lock things, whatever the hell you want to call them, from the Ice Mountain quest, they do come with copper and tin ores, but literally everywhere else I've checked, it's like the only way you can get a copper or tin ore is from the dig site quest, which already requires other stats as well to actually complete from cleaning finds. And there's no bronze bar spawn in the game. So there's only iron bars and you can't actually smith iron bars until 15. Now I could do blur at eight. So one to eight, the grind is probably all gonna be through those chests. So if I can get those, those loots from the ice mountain quest, I can actually get my smithing to 8 and start doing Blurite if I ever need smithing requirements for anything. So I might just go ahead and take that route. I don't. I was going to originally try and use this lamp on smithing, but I don't think it's really necessary. I really don't know yet what skill. Like I said, I'm just for now I'm going to destroy the antique lamp. I'm going to upgrade my melee training equipment. Actually, I came to afford the RPG, never mind. Wait, wait, wait a second. I got 29 GP in the bank. Hold on. The RPG is an untradeable, so I can technically buy it from this shop here. 225, we have just enough coins for- wait, RPG or staff, actually. I'm trying to think, is there a staff spawn anywhere? Ah, oh, there is a staff spawn, so I really don't need the staff. The staff spawn looks like it's actually just been recently added, so that would be good to train magic with uh, here in a little bit. But for now, this is our best in slot for melee. Surprisingly, just because of its attack speed, it's 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 like the same as an MSB or a short bow on rapid. So it's better than this bronze sword for pretty much any kind of training at the moment. Oh, I didn't realize this guy gives me a beginner clue. Really be something. I'm gonna keep this. Now there is a one in forty-four chance I can get an air staff from a beginner casket, which would be an upgrade from the staff I'm about to go collect here. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. There's a few things, I guess, that could be useful from a beginner cask. Crafting might be one of those things that's actually kind of hard to train now that I'm thinking about it. Well, no. I mean, I could, I could literally shear a sheep and then exchange that for bowstrings, or not bowstrings, balls of wool, and then uh, drop them. Because shearing sheep here doesn't give any XP, so we can do this. Wait a second, can we? No, wait, he, he takes the balls of wool. What am I doing? I can't even do this. I have to go make the balls of wool, and anything that gives me XP, like making balls of wool, I have to drop. So, what am I doing here? I don't think I'm ever going to be able to do this quest. The shear spawn was pretty much actually useless. I can't even craft those into balls of wool and technically keep them. I was realizing balls of wool, there's probably obviously something even better than this, but there's a leather spawn in the Shazy Inn encampment. I can get a needle from a, a 1 in 10 chance of a, searching a haystack. Hilariously enough, I know, but if there's a way to get thread, I could technically get my early crafting levels up with leather instead of 
balls of wool because I think balls of wool are tremendously worse. Destroy this one arrow I have. Alright, so this is a one-time free teleport to the stronghold. Hell yeah, free teleport to the security stronghold. There we go. Let's see where these spawns are at. Here is the beer spawn. Now, do these things get mad at me if I take their beer? Oh, they don't. And a cooked meat spawn. Beautiful. So this is our best in slot food right now as well. Beer is used for a lot of quests. You had to buy people a beer, I believe. In the Vampire Slayer, you have to buy someone a beer. I don't know if you have to actually buy it or not, but, you know, it's going to be useful. Trust me. It's, it's beer. It's always useful. Another cool thing, if you guys didn't know this, is now that I have glass for free... Holy fuck! Okay. Holy shit, that was a okay, that's a that's an easter egg. Holy fucking shit, that guy doesn't like me. Normally, you can refill these classes on those barrels across the game. There's tons of beer barrels. So now that I have actually beer glasses, I can refill them for free without XP or GP. But weirdly enough, if you do it in here, you get auto-attacked by a fucking barbarian, which is kind of funny. If you didn't know, you can actually just spam click the doors if you have Authenticator on to get through the second door there without ever answering a single question. So you'll never actually have to know about the security of your account because it doesn't even exist anyways. Give me my boots. I couldn't stop at just having the 10k because well, that's just not good enough. We're an untradable man here. We love our untradables and this is going to be our best in slot actually for quite a while probably. I'm going to go ahead and use this 10k finally and buy a chronicle and some pages because that's going to be extremely handy and it is an untradable so I can use the GP to purchase it. I actually could use a cape as well uh, that's untradable because I don't know when the hell I'm ever going to get an actual cape. So that does have cape stat bonuses which are plus ones. Might as well buy it as well it has uh, you know that secret little thing to it. Fun fact you don't even need to run from the skeleton you can literally walk away from it without even getting slapped a single time. Here we go, first, actually second quest completed, some more quest points, and some starting prayer levels. So I just had this revolutionary idea, you can't drop these training arrows to get more because they have a destroy option, not a drop option, but you can shoot them. So why not just shoot a bunch of these around me, then once they're all gone, claim more from the range tutor. Okay, I've got more arrows, so I'm just picking these up if I don't die first to this man who's literally ramboing the hell out of me. Apparently there is a staff spawn in the area that has been added in place of clan wars i think i see it there she is can we make it i say we go for it let's do it fuck it all right there we go we have our staff upgrade so best in slot mage if you could say that and uh, now we're in Varrock. I'm going to go ahead and complete that clue step and get 8 attack on the dummies here. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and uh, get 8 attack on these dummies because you can train from 1 to 8 attack here and it's relatively quick compared to normal training. Might as well get it out of the way if I ever need some sort of accuracy. Unfortunately though, the, I, I equipped the event RPG thinking maybe I could attack the dummy faster because there are some objects that actually rely on your um, equipped weapon to determine your attack speed. But unfortunately, I don't think this dummy is one of those. So if you didn't know, also, yeah, there are dummies upstairs in Varrock Castle. All right, here we go. First casket. Oh my god, it's exactly what I wanted. What the fuck? I was just talking about an air staff earlier. It's like a 1 in 35 drop. That's perfect. Now that's best in slot over the staff by far. I don't even need to farm air ruins now. I can just get mines. Um from that Lumbridge spawn. There's probably a better spawn to be fair. I'll have to look into it later. I'm not that obsessed with training magic right now, but uh, that's that's cool. That fucking air staff is actually pretty cool. I went ahead and started also Ernest the Chicken because I believe you don't need any items to do this and he gives you a free 300 coins and four quest points. I might as well just get it done. Uh, It'll contribute towards the 16 quest points I need later on anyways, and it's one of those quests, like I said, that doesn't require anything to start. Just found the most handy door in RuneScape, guys. Look at this right here. It's, it works perfectly. Alright, that's Ernest the Chicken complete, and we're already at 7 quest points with no real problems along the way of these quests besides Sheep Shearer, I guess. Couldn't complete that one, <laughs> of all the things.
So if I actually do want to get more arrows, I'm going to have to shoot them out again on these men, unfortunately, which is what exactly what I'm going to do right now. Let's do it. Let's shoot these men. I've decided it's time to explore the wilderness. I know it's dangerous and I'm a hardcore Iron Man, but I could really give two less fucks about that. I just want to see what these spawns are out here because, you know, there's good things like steel plate legs, steel plate bodies out here, but I really don't know everything that's out here and I'm not going to scour the wiki one item at a time. Instead, I'd rather just walk around and get the feel for the place and look at that. There's already some body ruins over here. Wow, two. Two it looks like. Two per spawn. So, you never know what's out here. So that's an obvious upgrade once I can actually wear those things. Interesting. That could be a way to get smithing because there's no coal required for that. Once I'm 40 smithing, obviously. I could just turn that straight into a bar. There's literally a furnace over here too, so that makes it even more of a possibility. I could hop worlds for that gold ore and then basically just smelt it in that furnace right there. Now I would have to drop the bar after that, but why is there a ladder that goes to nowhere? Interesting. Okay. Dark fishing bait. What the hell did I just pick up? A cake tin? That's probably for a quest I'll need. I could make a cake with flour and water if I get it myself. Good money making method over here. Five coins a pop. Is that a real sapphire spawn or did someone just leave it on the ground? Real sapphire? Ah, you tricked me, Nico. It's chaos ruins. That's actually perfect. How many though? How many cat? Five chaos. That's not bad. Technically, I could climb up to the third level of this castle where there's no NPCs, I believe, and wait around 15 minutes for the deaggression timer, and from there I could just go down the ladder and continuously hop worlds and pick up Chaos Ruin spawns, um, which might be extremely good for magic training XP. I don't know, I'm gonna leave it here for now. Just a, just a thought, just an idea. Nice, this is really good for range training. The fact that there's two in every spot on every world, well not every spot, but it looks like a lot of these spots. This could be extremely handy. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this. This is amazing actually. This means I can train my range without having to rely on training arrows over and over again. Of course, I'm gonna have to pick up this iron bar. It's gonna be useful later in probably a quest or two. Death Plateau comes to mind if I can ever get the trout. I don't know if I can, or the bread even for that matter. I don't know if I can. Another quest that comes in mind is Knight's Sword. Um, you know, I don't know if, I don't think I can do that either though because I need red berry pie. I don't know, there's always a quest that requires though a bronze bar. Holy shit, these things are so small, you can't even hardly see them. One bronze bolt. There's other bronze bolts around here somewhere, but I literally cannot see them. They're so small. My eyesight is, my eyes are like literally straining trying to find these things. The arrows I found, considering you can actually see them, they're close together. There's two in a spot. It's way better than the bronze bolt idea I had here. Um, was not expecting to find bronze arrows there, so that's one surprise. Oh my god, there's an Earth Staff spawn? That is actually super handy as well. So I had no idea there was an Earth Staff spawn here, but we just got it. This can be used with the air ruins the tutor gives us to maybe make some Earth Strike spells. By the way, we got our Steel Plate body. We can't even wield it yet, but uh, it's there. It's an upgrade. There is a Gold Necklace spawn here, and I never knew that even existed. It's not really useful at all, but it beats the Ghost Beak Amulet. Kind of. Maybe not. The Ghost Speak Amulet has a skull on it once again, and, and that's pretty badass. Cosmic Ruins are down this way, of course. Um, I don't know how useful those are going to be anytime soon. Actually, I don't even know. What could I even do with these? I don't, I don't have any bolts to enchant. I don't know. I'll just grab them in case I need them once again for a quest or something. Um, these will actually be handy. I just realized these Elemental Ruins I grabbed because I can do Waterfall quests with them. If I can get everything else I need for that, which I believe is just a rope. Grimy Guam leaf spawn. Is this real? Is this a real thing? Now that's the first herb spawn I think I've ever known about. Um, obviously there's probably going to be some things from chests that don't give XP or supply crates that don't give XP, but that herb spawn might be handy. An attack potion? Okay, sure, I'll, t I'll take it. That's a weird spawn as well. So already... The tramp, the scavenger's bank is looking pretty fucking stacked here. I've got almost a scroll bar on this thing of just 
stuff I've looted off the ground basically and gotten that air staff from that clue scroll. That was the best thing I could have gotten honestly from the beginner clue I think. Because everything else, you know, comes later anyways. Oh god, what have I done? What have I done? No! God help us. I'm gonna have to go come on an all just to slash this fucking web. Are you serious? This is awful. What the is this even possible? Why, why does this happen to me? The first web was fine. I walked through it and then it just regens as soon as I come through, bro. I'm fucking stuck in a web cage. Somebody help me. I'm gonna have to bring an alt here and slash this fucking web open. Never mind. Wait, wait. The fucking bot's gonna help me. He got me! The fellow Iron Man- well, group Iron Man, that doesn't really count, but the fellow Iron Man freed me from my fucking cage. Thank you so much, GIM. Is that a fucking blood rune spawn? Am I this naive? Is there really a blood rune spawn in the wilderness? A singular blood rune. If we ever have to cast- oh my god, imagine we have to go do mage training arena. And we gotta cast, like, what is it, like a hundred spells? Ah, here we go, the beautiful boneyard, my favorite place to be. So I've decided to take the difficult route to 43 prayer. This is probably going to take between three and four hours, but we're low level. We might as well do it now. So here was my method for 43 prayer. Well, I decided to go to the boneyard where you can collect big bones for no XP in return. Yes, they're all spawns. I did this while invincible. I mean, while unaggressive to the NPCs. From here, I sat on an alt account that had the wilderness hard diary done that could direct the opelisk south of the boneyard to any location it wanted to. I would hop over after that account aggressed all the NPCs and have it teleport to the destination as soon as I logged in, just like this. Now, as soon as I got over there to 40 whatever wilderness, I went a little bit south, southwest, to get to the chaos altar where I then sacrificed these big bones. Here I sacrificed the bones for an increased prayer bonus obviously and this altar also gives you a chance of not spending your actual bones. Yes this was risky, but I encountered no one at this low of a combat level, so I got to keep my hardcore status. As well, whenever the time was necessary and my bones were emptied out of my inventory, I just used the same process to return back through the Opolisk with my alt account, and then logged out as soon as the animation of the teleport of the Opolisk hit, so I made sure no NPCs actually attacked me. The split tick I was teleported into that 19 wilderness where I risked my account against mammoths and black unicorns. Alright, so I already got 43 prayer here. It's taken me like four and a half hours. I'm probably just really slow, I know. Uh, anyways, 43 prayer. I decided to go ahead and just get the good old 44 for Eagle Eye because I will be using range a lot probably on this account. I decided it's it's probably just worth it to go ahead and get it out of the way. Still have our hardcore status, barely. Had a few close calls there. Um, a run-in with a fucking Ent and... What else was that? A black unicorn? Man, those things don't like me, but I got a little bit lucky, you could say. Like I said, you might see me lose the status hella fucking early. I almost already lost it today on episode one, so don't be surprised. I'm not a, I'm not a good person when it comes to staying alive, okay? I do a lot of unhealthy and terrible things, uh, both in real life and inside of the game, so. I have to slaughter some more innocent NPCs around the range to here now because once again, a man needs his arrows, especially a poor man who can't trade GP for them like myself. Let me look up waterfall requirements right now and see uh, what exactly we'll need. I think by picking up those elemental ruins earlier in the wilderness, I already have everything except for the rope. So I'm going to be looking, um, there has to be a rope spawn or something in, in RuneScape. I'm going to look this up real quick. I've already got a jug in the bank. I don't think I need another one of those. Now this could be a way to make money. <laughs> Uh, isn't this, isn't it like if you pick this guy like 30 bananas or something fucked, he gives you money for it? This is like a really old way that people actually made money, I remember this. Because I realized I will need more money than I expected because obviously the charter ships are going to be costing a lot and that's a really good means of transportation. 30 GP. Interesting. So the guy pays you 30 GP per like 10 bananas. It's not bad. It's not bad. I think why they implemented it was like it's a way to get 30 GP to pay the fare back on the boat. If you 
somehow get stuck here without money, I guess. That would make sense. And that was bef this all came out, obviously, before the home teleports. Alright, so that was actually a relatively cheap fare, I think, just because I was already on Karanja. Usually when I charter to Catherby on other accounts, it's like 1.2k, 1.4k. So, I don't know. I guess that's good. Now, before I actually go and start this quest, I'm going to head over to Barbarian Assault uh, just to go ahead and get the minigame teleport unlocked by doing the tutorial because it's just better navigation back to this point, obviously. So this is an untradeable. He gave it to us for free, so we're good there. And we're going to head back to um, Barbarian Assault now that we can use that teleport. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and start Trino Village while I'm here and unlock the maze because uh, I don't want to have to run through this again. I just realized and eventually I think Trino Village will be possible for a completion because there is obviously log spawns all around RuneScape. And I believe logs are really the only tradable item you need to complete that quest. Okay, so now I believe I've unlocked the follow from this little guy here. Actually, there's... <laughs> actually, hold on a second. There's another quest, even, possibly, that I could start while I'm over here and get some decent gear from. Five coins for Cali Brew. Is Cali Brew tradable? No, it's not. So, Fight Arena could actually be completed. I'm not gonna obviously do it right this second, but it's not a bad idea in the future. Right now, I'm just gonna grab the armor because... Actually, it has no negative range or magic attack bonus on it, and it's got pretty decent defense bonus, so it's going to be a best in slot for, you know, defense and non-negating attack bonuses for a while. Boy, does that look slick right there. That looks nice. Alright, let's complete it. There we go, baby. 30 attack, 30 strength. Huge upgrade. 40 mithril seeds, 2 gold bars, maybe could use those in the future for something, 2 diamonds as well. Let's go ahead now and attempt Witch's House. A classic, a classic quest that must be done to improve our HP level because right now it is garbage. While I'm up here, I'm gonna grab some logs later for Tree Gnome Village quest. I'm gonna have to go to fucking Edgeville to get leather gloves. Oh, this is fun. While I am in Edgeville, or near Edgeville, I've decided, I almost forgot, that monk robes were a thing, and you literally pick them up off of a table, and I have prayer so I can go up to the second level of the monastery. Wow, those are going to be helpful, considering they're like the best prayer bonus practically in the game. Best in slot prayer bonus already achieved. It's south of- Dude, how do I never notice these things? There's a glove spawn just sitting right here? I've never seen this in my life, and I've been to Edgeville like- 20,000 times crazy well best in slot gloves now uh, some extra defense bonus as well all right we are ready look at that who don't want to mess with this guy so I just got this triangle sandwich but I looked it up I was like this could be best in slot it heals 6 HP best in mouth best whatever it heals 6 HP and I get it from the sandwich lady but also I looked this up there is a spawn for these six healing sandwiches in the woodcutting guild so we're gonna have to get hasidious favor and 60 woodcutting but possibly that's gonna be one of our best in slot foods that we can use for quite a while yeah get fucked you stupid insect was a spider an insect no it's an arachnid there we go. finally let's get this ball let's get out of here all right, here's your ball back. Give me some HP XP. Thank you. All right, so we are now already 31, almost 32 combat. I think I'm going to go ahead and do uh, some more quests here. And I'm going to get that 16 quest points just from doing some of these combat quests. Uh, I can do Tree Gnome Village, and I believe I can do Fight Arena. And I don't know how much quest points those reward, but, you know, it might be enough to get me to 16. But first, some more arrows. <laughs> Well, we actually got a clue scroll, and we can technically pick up clue scrolls because they are untradeables. Let's go kill us some fucking gazards. Killing this guy right here literally took me almost an hour, and I was lagging so bad that I probably almost died like 10 times while trying to pray flick this guy. But we got it done. Finally. Holy fuck. Holy shit, that took forever. I almost died like 15 times with this lag, too. Thank you for that. Also, this gnome amulet here, if you guys didn't know, it's best in slot now for us, too. It's got some massive defense bonuses. I think it's even better than, like, a defense amulet. 
this brew I have to buy from this barman to hand to the next NPC is not a tradable item, so I can exchange GP for it, and I can actually do this quest. If it was tradable, this quest would be impossible for me to complete, but fortunately, according to the wiki, this Cali brew here is untradable, and let's just make sure. Yep, okay. Can't put it in the loot checker, so it is untradable. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? Moonwalking like fucking Michael Jackson out here. I am still lagging like crazy right now, so I'm having to lazy flick like this just to be safe. Ooh, I forgot to give some good thieving starting XP as well. Speaking of starting XP, while we are here, even though we got 16 quest points, while we're here, I want to do a very easy and memorable quest for myself. I think I have enough logs in the bank to do this, and I think I even have a jug of water in the bank. And I knew I needed that jug for something, and I picked it up in the basement of Lumbridge or something like that, and filled it up. Free woodcutting XP, why not? Let's do it. So I could pick up that blanket because obviously it's untradeable. I would hope a child's blanket's untradeable. Let's dance for one last time. Please don't, please don't ban me for this. Oh yeah, it gives you law ruins. That's right. Eight law ruins and 14 wood cutting. Now I could go get an iron pickaxe um, right now from a spawn, but I don't know. It's not worth the effort of going over there just to get 10 mining. I mean, obviously in the long run, I'm going to go get that iron pick. Also though, there is a steel pickaxe in the haunted mine, which requires priest in peril, but that's quite a ways away because I've realized the only way to get the essence from priest in peril, since mining essence gives XP, monster drops or other sources of essence I can't use. The only way to get that essence is to actually go to soul wars once I'm 40 combat, which is the requirement for soul wars, and then trade in zeal, which doesn't require any XP to get for reward things from soul wars. And there's a chance of pulling noted pure essence from those. I think it's a relatively normal chance of getting it, but it's going to take a lot of soul wars games still probably to pull those essence. So. Um, to actually do Priest in Peril, that's quite a ways away for me. This is a totally deserved Sapphire, given to me for free by a random event. Please, trust me. I just realized there's proof in my chat box. Your reward is one uncut Sapphire. So no, this did not come from the rocks. I'm not cheating. I swear to God. That's 10 mining. Okay, we can finally go and do the quest. I think I found just yet another hidden gem in this wonderful build. So I can make these because there are there are meat spawns and there are bread spawns around the game and there are knife spawns and that didn't give me any XP to make this and it heals six. Right as of now, this is going to be my best uh, food source um, until I can get into the woodcutting guild where then I can get triangle sandwiches, which are the same healing uh, potential. So, I mean, woodcutting guild is probably far away. 60 woodcutting. I'm not going to be getting that anytime soon. So honestly, these steak sandwiches are not bad at all, and it's definitely something this account could use. Oh my god, I didn't even realize. So the three coins for this quest are used to buy an Asgarnian Ale for Burnt Off in the Falador Inn. Fortunately though, there is one Asgarnian Ale spawn, thank god, at the Toad and Chicken Pub in Birthwarp. So I want to see if this works. I could probably just hand him the one that I get off of uh, Birthwarp, but uh, you know, even if I can't, I could just drop the one that I have to buy and then hand him that one afterwards, technically. So, sweet. That's also going to be useful for Death Plateau because I'm realizing I can actually do Death Plateau now if I get trout from Easy Clues. Um, there's a chance to get a random amount of noted trout from an Easy Clue, so that could come in handy just to do death plateau i would have to do that and then i would have to go inside the carnelian mansion already basement and pick up bread spawns as well okay so he took the ale i didn't actually have to buy one and there we go
I was close. How many times now have I almost died on this account? Like 20, 30, 40, 50? I don't know, something like that. 2,000 coins. Most importantly, I think the ability to make that steak sandwich is a lot. <laughs> as dumb as that sounds, that's like a pretty good source of food. So I didn't even know this was a thing, but apparently Baronite Mace is equivalent to a Ruined Mace, which it would be by far my best melee weapon. I'm just not sure yet how to do that. This is such new content. I don't know anything about new content. I'm just looking at the wiki on it right now, trying to figure that out. I think I have to kill some golems, do some kind of fishing, as well as do some kind of mining and get a lot of shards. I think that's going to be our best melee weapon for a very long time, and it requires 40 attack to wield, and ironically, we just got 40 attack from quests, so... I think this is destiny. I think we have to follow this. No. Seven fishing wreck. Ah. So I finally found the fishing spots in this area. They do require seven fishing and I'm one fishing right now. I was thinking I could do sea slug quest and maybe burn some logs in wizard's tower for 35 fire making requirement. But I realized it actually doesn't even really matter because I can't get the swamp paste, the one item required for Sea Slug Quest. I'm going to have to train manually from 1 to 7 fishing. Now I can get Swamp Tar and I can pick that up from Lumbridge, but I can't make it into Swamp Paste because that gives XP and I can't buy it from shops because that's exchanging GP for the item. I've now found the mining spot as well and I need 14 mining. I'm only level 10 so I've decided uh, to actually use the baronite deposits here. I'm gonna just sit here and get 14 mining on some of these random rocks around the area All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get that iron pickaxe now, but before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and pull some more ruins off from the tutor Just while I can I think every time I can teleport I'm gonna try and do that whenever I'm just routing myself somewhere else that requires a teleport I might take the baronite first and try to get some crates with it um, to get a weapon upgrade to kill the golems with because technically that would be better we'll just have to see not entirely sure about that coming up on 14 mining one more ore and we can finally mine that baronite vein over there interested to see how fast that mines extremely slow does it continue though is it afk okay okay i can i can deal with this it's AFK, it's not bad. So you get a Baronite deposit like every five minutes and I'm gonna go use these and smith them for that chance at one piece of the mace through this activity. Let's crush. <laughs> no, no, no. <sighs> Fuck am I supposed to get? Are these bankable? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I've done some more research since I was fishing. For some reason, I don't know why, but I thought it would be impossible to make a red berry pie because it gives cooking XP, you need red berries. And I'm thinking, you know, like, there's no way there's a red berry pie of all things spawned in RuneScape. But there is one. There is one inside of the wilderness. And that is at the pirate's hideout of all places. There's a red berry pie spawn. There's iron bar spawns in the wilderness. And I can mine blurite ore since it's untradeable. So technically... This is huge. I can do Knight's Sword Quest, and I don't have to actually collect these shards before I can start bashing the deposits, because even I don't need the copper and tin ore from the lockboxes after all. I literally can go do Knight's Sword Quest, um, and I don't have to rely on getting two to three copper or tin ore at a time. We're in the wilderness with no fucking knife, of course. Oh wait, it's already cut. Please stay. No! No! Why do I always forget the knife, damn it? Is this pickaxe a slash weapon? This is a blade? What do you mean? Look at that. This is a blade. Come on. You can tell I don't go in the wilderness very often. And there's a good reason for that. I've never been to this place. Do I need like a thieving level to get in here? It's only half a pie? No! That's still, that's still gonna be faster just to get that red berry pie. And, and complete that quest than it is to do those like loot loot boxes pick loot pick lock whatever the fuck they're called lock boxes for three copper ore at a time and like a one in 30 chance and only getting like three of those per like hour so i mean 39 thieving it looks like is what we're gonna have to do 39 thieving to complete 
a fucking like F2P shit tier quest. And this was all before I realized you can't combine pies into a whole pie, only half slices of pizza into a whole pizza. I was severely mistaken, and I regret going down this rabbit hole you're about to see. I just realized something else, we're not actually even going to be able to do the feud quest. It requires a desert disguise, which is an untradeable item. But to make the desert disguise, the only way to get the top and the goatee is to buy it from Ali Morrison inside Al Karad, and those two items to make the untradeable item are tradable. So technically I would have to be buying two tradable items with GP, and if that ever happens, the item needs to be instantly dropped, not formed into another untradable. So I can't even do the feud quest, and there was even another crazier thing I thought about. I can't even use a Shantae Pass. I can't get a Shantae Pass. I can't even get into the fucking desert. I can't buy a Shantae Pass because that's trading GP for a tradable item. A Shantae Pass is a tradable item. So I can't even get into the, the desert region of the entire game unless... Now here's a big unless. You don't always need a Shantae Pass to get in here. What you can do instead is pull a Narda scroll teleport from like a, a clue, an easy, medium, hard clue. And that's the only way I can physically see us getting in the desert until we get like, what is it, like a desert amulet? Um, if I can even do that. So we would need to stock up on <laughs> Narda teleports from clues and then possibly get another form of transportation in here. I can't buy Shantae passes, guys. I didn't even think about this, but it, it I guess it makes it just that much more interesting. Anytime I want to get into the desert right now, I literally have to get pull a lucky like teleport from a clue scroll. I just got 39 thieving after like over 2 hours. Um, probably the slowest way possible, by the way. I'm um, I'm not very good at skilling. Uh, just FYI. Please don't make fun of me. Anyways, uh, I read up on the wiki about this pirate's shithole, whatever, pirate den place in the wilderness. And apparently you need a lockpick to get into this place. And the problem with that is there's only one lockpick spawn. And that is about right here in Yanil Agility Dungeon. A place as well, I don't think I've ever really been or can remember what requires what agility. But if I can get from this ladder to this ladder without any agility, because I'm one fucking agility, I don't know how I have one XP, but I do, then maybe, just maybe, I can get the lockpick spawn without having to train. And watch, I'm going to get there, and it's going to be like a like a 60 agility requirement or something totally ridiculous. I, I keep just throwing myself curveballs trying to do this stupid quest, and I know there's going to be another one here soon. Oh my god! What the fuck? Okay, there's another entrance. Monkey bars are what, 15 agility to get to? Is that the only obstacle though? Let me guess, what is it, like 50 agility or something to cross this thing? <laughs> oh my god. Are you kidding me? Why is it so hard to get a damn lock pick in this game? I'm gonna do a run just with the pick lock, see if I can even get any ores. See how frequent the ore drops are without getting smithing up first. So that's the problem. We need to get at least eight smithing to smith blurite. Uh, I could use my lamp from X marks to spot for a little bit of smithing and I could just lamp the smithing to eight if I really needed to and go and do something else temporarily, which is what I'll do probably if I see that neither of these routes are quite possible. Um, but I want to see just what 750 of these Baronite shards can actually get me first as a test run. And then I want to see if I can actually get uh, that red berry pie and if Thurgo will accept it. Another problem I was thinking of is I thought you could combine two halves of a pie into one, but I think that's only pizzas, ironically. Whereas a pie has an actual dish, so it would make more sense as to being able to combine the pie rather than a pizza. But, you know, anyways, whatever. Thurgo might take a half a pie. I don't know. It's still technically a red berry pie. But uh, we're going to find out. Even if it requires us getting 40 agility and 39 smithing, possibly even more just to get this stupid red berry pie, I want to know if I can actually complete this quest. And furthermore, I think we're going to have to give him the pie anyways to make blurite at 8 smithing. I think you can't actually smith blurite bars until you've talked to him. I'm not positive about that, but I'm pretty sure that's a wreck. That's at least what the wiki 
or the skill guide says. It might be wrong. I don't know. You know, I'm I'm just contemplating all of this while I'm mining a fucking ore vein right now, so sorry for the ramble. All right, we've hit over 750 shards. I'm going to go ahead and put these in the dwarf and come back with an empty inventory and a weird swath. Wow, there's actually someone here. And a, a little bit different of a strategy. See how many of these lockboxes I can, in fact, get with this strategy. So let's see what can happen in here. I've never been in here in my entire life, so probably gonna really fuck this up. But hopefully my manip comes in handy. Okay, so my manip worked. I'm not getting kicked out, but there's just limited, you know, lockboxes on these pedestals. Like, I've literally taken every lockbox I can, and... I've only got gathered three simple lockboxes and I need a lot more if I need ores. There's some of these you can't get to no matter what it seems. So right for right now, I'm gonna exit with what I have. I'm probably gonna come back in here for one more attempt after this. And I'm just gonna see what happens if you log out in here. Cause I have a feeling if you log out in here, you might lose whatever you have. And I, I wanna get some loot out of this, so. Oh, we already got some ores. First box there. Only the simple ones have the, the 10 and the copper. It's still only two. Two of each. Some oak logs. So we've got eight tin ore and two coppers. And that took us like an hour to get enough shards for that much copper and tin. Uncuts. Talismans, okay. Well, that's probably not useful. What is this gonna give me even? Is this gonna give me actual fish? <laughs> Let's find out. What the fuck is that? What are these things? Raw gut, I gotta look this up. So apparently you need seven cooking for these things and guess what I don't have? Seven cooking. <laughs> we're gonna have to pick grain and we're gonna have to make flour and use buckets of water and cook so we can get Four to seven cooking that way, and then we can get passive cooking by doing the guppy method. Honestly, that cave has a lot of activity that I can do because there's so many untradables in it. And it's a good place to be for this account, I'm, but I'm already getting really tired of it, unfortunately. We're going to get our seven cooking, and I think I'm going to go take the X marks the spot lamp while I'm doing this and get as high as I can in smithing because that's, that's what's looking like is going to be the most impossible skill to train at these low levels at least until I can smith this iron, these iron ores and the iron bars from other things. What is my life came to right now? I'm literally hopping worlds in Lumbridge Castle to pick up empty pots to use to get flour and grind into them to make dough. That's f six. Seven. All right, so I just smithed two bars for a total of like 14 XP. Wow, that only took us about an hour of work. Now I'm on my way to collect my lamp from X marks the spot. I'm gonna go ahead and use that on smithing as well since there's no requirement for that lamp. Okay, smithing it is, let's see. Four smithing, almost five smithing from the lamp, so that cuts down our grind a lot. We might be onto something here. We just got a feather as well from one of those uh, lock pick things. Loot crate, lock crate, lock pit things. Lock box, you fucking idiot. It's called a lock box. So actually, let's do this quest. Let's do it. I think you can use the lamps on skills under 10, even though they, they get 500 XP each. I think, I think you can do it. Let's get our, our feather we just pulled. Perfect timing. Now he's gonna want me to run across the continent yet again. I, I love this quest and I love this continent. Have I ever said that? Have I ever told you guys how much I love Zaya? It's such a well-designed, formatted, with, you know, no obstacles in your way of walking anywhere. Uh, beautiful island, continent, whatever you want to call it. I mean, at least when this place was barren, you didn't have to crawl around 5,000 different objects. Now it's just like, Hey, there's 5,000 useless objects and buildings you don't have to walk around and gates. And you only have to walk, you know, 10,000 feet to your next destination. Fuck! We'll get, we're gonna get a piece of broken glass from this. I don't know if that's ever useful in a quest. I think it's useful in Sea Slug, but I don't think we can even do that anyway. I don't think that... <sighs> Sorry. This long walk is making me so tired. I don't think that, um... This is gonna be useful for anything. 
think it, I think it's just trash because it's broken glass. It might just do it. Yes, it actually works. Was it eight smithing I needed? Well, I might save that other one. We'll see if we can mine Blurite and smith it. And if we can't... I'm definitely going to have to use that lamp on smithing. So I can pick this wheat because it didn't give me any XP. I can put it down this hopper because that's not going to give me any XP. Can I fill more than one? Oh god. This is going to take a while. I'm definitely not uh, testing low priority force movements here or doing anything fishy. Just making some bread at Lumbridge like any other normal person would do with pots of flour and buckets of water. Yep, okay, seven cooking. All right, so like I said before, these are untradeable ores, so I can get XP and keep them. And if I can smith them in the bars, they'll be untradeable bars, I can keep them. And then I can even smith them into blurite limbs and keep those. So if this actually works, if I can smith these without having to mess with a redberry pie at all, it's going to be huge. The wiki's only wrong, I'd say 5% of the time, so that gives us a 5% chance that we can actually somehow smith these ores before we actually complete the quest. I'm just making up these statistics, by the way. Um... They are very bad guesstimates. You remember how I just said Wiki is wrong 5% of the time? Well, Wiki literally says that you need 8 smithing to smith a Blurite bar. But according to the actual game, you need 13. Yeah. So that's really good. All right, so I'm using this last lamp on smithing because this is going to be one hell of a ride. Like I said, we're going down a fucking rabbit hole at this point. It's like one thing after another just for this smithing grind, just for this mace. I want this mace badly. I didn't even know this mace was a thing until today, but now, now I want it. I really want it. And we got our big fishing net just now. It's the only spawn in the game we have access to right now. Well, I somehow already got the handle so much for... Uh, passive <laughs> fishing XP that was way quicker than I expected um, well I'm gonna go ahead and do this to 10 fishing because I need it anyways and why the fuck not I need some cooking XP and I need some of these shards for some more lock boxes don't mind me just cooking some guppy for some dog ass XP um, and here we go coming up on oh what is that eight cooking Wow I'm trying to get 10 to 12 smithing and and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to fishing contest for the fucking dwarven stout spawn under the white wolf mountain and I'm gonna fucking sip that thing for 13 smithing and then smith blurite ore to 14 or something but I don't I don't know if I can even smith blurite ore until I do knight's sword it's the wiki says you can't but like you probably can because the wiki also told me it was eight smithing to smith blurite bars and i used it on the fucking furnace and it told me 13. <laughs> doesn't that require a level or something are you serious oh fuck i thought it was like 30 smithing wreck or something apparently i was informed that you can repair the struts in motherload mine I thought that was for some reason a 30 smithing requirement. I don't know why this whole time. I thought that was a 30 smithing requirement, but if that's true, I can literally just go do that real quick for 14 smithing. And I wasted all of that time, uh, you know, trying to get lock boxes. Well, I guess not because I got some good loot from it. I'm just going to go ahead and get 14 here. Then I'm going to go upstairs and see if I can actually smith the blurite or into bars without the quest knight sword, just out of curiosity's sake. All right, that is 14 smithing. That actually took a while, so it wasn't the greatest method, honestly. The lamps might have been worth it. I probably would have spent the same amount of time considering that it it, it goes off your level here, doing client of Corinne and X marks the spot. Like, I spent like 20 minutes just going from pretty much 11 to 14. Probably would have taken way longer from level one and so forth. So maybe it wasn't that big of a waste of time. I can't believe that for some reason, once again, I thought that there was a requirement for fixing struts. But anyways, yeah, we've got the 14 smithing wreck now uh, to actually bash the Baronite. And hopefully I'll pull the other part of that mace from doing that. I have a few of these already in the bank right now, but before I do that, 
Like I said, I just want to see if I can smith a Blurite Ore into a bar without needing Knight's Sword Quest. Okay, so there is a wreck. So it was right about one thing, but wrong about something else. But I'm going to try it once I get 40 agility. I'm going to try to get that lockpick and actually give Thurgo a half of a pie <laughs> and see if he takes it. Or maybe if I have two halves, who knows? Um, maybe he'll just take it like that. Doubtful, but like I said, anything is worth a try at this point. So getting some nice smithing XP from this at least. I was getting like seven fishing XP a fish earlier and it was fishing one like every fucking two minutes. Oh my god. Oh no, that's an an astroscope. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I thought that was the I thought that was the piece. It's an ancient astroscope. So that is two inventories of Baronite deposits down, and all I got was this useless telescope that gives you one kudo from the museum. So this was over an hour and a half worth of deposits. I'm a little tired of seeing Barney in my peripherals all day today, so I'm going to go ahead and go over to the Gnome Agility course, and then switch over to Draenor and get some more agility levels there, and then finally come back to this area tomorrow. You all know me, I love crawling through pipes. So as you can see, I've been doing a bit of agility. I ended up taking a break from the Baronite Shards last night and did a, a large agility grind actually, and now I'm finally kind of bored of it. So I'm going to stop at 43 for a bit. That's a substantial amount of run energy regen and, and all of that. All right, we can make it across the first obstacle. Let's see what else comes in our way between us and the lockpick. Okay. So I knew there would be another obstacle for this lockpick. 57 agility. Uh, looks like we're going to go back on our agility grind again later. I swear monkey bars were a 15 agility wreck, but I guess that's only the ones in Edgeville. That's unfortunate, but... uh. You know, one day, one day we'll get that fucking lockpick somehow. Uh, I was kind of expecting another obstacle in the way. I didn't look this up, I just went with the flow, you know. Hey, there's an altar right here. Well, isn't that swell? I guess this would be a good place to kill Chaos Druids if I could actually pick up any herbs they dropped. Holy mother of god, what just happened? Oh, and of course the poison. How did that spider even poison me? It, it rolled a zero on me, man. That's so unfortunate. I had protect melee up. Okay, poison does still tick down in F2P. But I think as long as we log out before every 10 seconds, it'll reset. Gonna eat our cooked meat and let our HP regen. And I'm just gonna wait out the cure timer with this interface open here. Oh my god, this didn't work. Now I could sit here, but I'm highly impatient. I'm gonna wait till my HP goes to 11 to do this. Alright. I think that's it. I think we're cured but we're not cured going to once again try and grind for that mace piece i guess this is some good passive xp it's not good i guess this is some passive xp that i'll be getting either way we just got a beginner clue now there's not much left that i really need from these there might be some food that i need for a quest later on or something but i guess we could do it i didn't even know you could roll clues from these weird baronite rocks here but i guess that's kind of cool I just want to get this part over with so I can go ahead and kill some golems, to be honest with you, because I hate golems so much. Fuck golems. Am I right? Imagine that. I got nothing from all of those deposits. All right, let's go. This is uh, about our fourth inventory of these deposits. Let's see if we can actually get something that's not useless for once. It just takes so long to get these stupid deposits. And yes, I'm still poisoned. Don't ask any questions about it. Um... It's not a bug. I don't know what happened, honestly. Still nothing. Man, still nothing. Alright, so I hopped back to a member's world and cured myself of that poison. Um, I'm also going to bring my clue scrolls along with me and maybe complete those, or at least do a step or two of them just while I'm over here as well. I'm going to obviously get more ruins because we always need more ruins. Always, always, always. Eventually, we're going to need, like, 42 magic, I believe, to wield void. Something like that. Alright, so I just got another beginner clue step that requires me to have leather boots. Luckily, there's a spawn of leather boots in the Lumbridge Castle cellar, so that's where I'm headed to next. And the clue's also in Lumbridge, so... Clap for that. I don't think I can do this right here. There's no way I can get the steel mace or the black cape, unfortunately. And this is step three of this easy clue. I can't even complete an easy clue, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop that. And I still have the beginner clue left, but unfortunately that's not as good, so 
Let's go complete that real quick. Six law runes, wow. To actually make the mace, I only need 1,000 Baronite shards, so I need to just save that much. If I get an extra 2,500, I'll probably unlock this one right here, just for an extra 10% buff to get the Baronite pieces, to try and get more uh, Baronite deposits, to try and get that mace off of those deposits. So if I get really unlucky here and get more and more shards, that's probably what I'll spend them on. And then after that, I'll probably spend them on lock boxes. You know what, we're gonna go with luck first. I'm feeling lucky. Let's do it. Hopefully we can pull our necessary item out quicker because I think that's going to be better than the 10% buff, which eventually if we get enough shards, I'm going to buy that too anyways. But you know, that's also useful for golems if I end up getting this piece earlier. All right. So here we go. Some more Baronite deposits. Let's see if the 2,500 shards I just sacrificed is worth it. <laughs> it was worth it. Barely. Holy shit. The last one in my inventory. Yes. Finally. The head is complete. 33 mining. 25 smithing. I think we've smithed like at least 300, 350 of these things. We've finally gotten the head. All that is now left is the, I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> but it's it comes from the golems and I got to kill golems with my fucking event RPG. This is gonna be fun I'm gonna get some defense levels while we're here. This guy might have the right idea. He's maging them As you can see the guy behind me is literally killing three golems or maybe even four in the amount of time I can even get one down to half HP and he's using mind ruins and fire strike So I think this guy truly did have a better idea and he gave me one of my own and that was to, of course, mage these golems, not kick them to death. It took me like an hour to kick down one of those higher tiered golems, but they have the higher drop rate. But his magic, even with the fire strike, was just destroying that thing. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use the runes I've collected from the mage tutor so far. And that should get me well enough to hopefully 17 for Windbolt. And from there, I'm going to go try and attempt to go to Dark Knight's Fortress in the wilderness to get those Chaos Bonds, uh, probably a few hundred of them, because I believe the drop rate is 1 in 150. And so I might get upwards of even like a thousand Chaos Runes and then come back here and attempt to kill more of these Golems with Soli Mage, all while training my magic level up anyways, which will need to be 42, I believe, for Void. Remember when I told you all I hate Golems? Well, I hate them with a passion. Wake up, you piece of shit. It's time to murder you and your whole family. So yeah, it, it already seems like these things are extremely weak to magic. Like, look at this. There we go, 17 magic. Wow, perfect kill with those mind runes. Zero left. All right, so that's my cue. I'm going to head to the wilderness, Dark Knight's Fortress, and pick up probably around a thousand chaos runes. So even the level eights are aggressive to me, even though I'm 37 combat, I guess that's just like a thing in the wilderness. So I'm just gonna sit up here till it's safe. I'm gonna wait for like a 15 minute um, de-aggression thing. If that's even a thing in the wilderness, I really don't know. I guess we'll find out. So the 15 minutes down here did actually work. I have these things de-aggressed to me now and I can literally just hop worlds and continuously pick up spawns uninterrupted because every time I'm attacked, obviously I get a 10 second combat timer. So by avoiding that, I can get these runes a hell of a lot faster and take zero damage, which is super nice because I don't have to deal with waiting, you know, and trying to trap these NPCs off every time I hop worlds. All right, so I just finished the run. Um, I hopped about... I would say over 350 times, spent over an hour in the wilderness, and I have gotten a fair bit of ruins. This should easily put me past 42 mage, if not more. I might actually go get a wizard hat spawn. Apparently there's one in Shazy, and before I um, take these to the golem for the last piece of that mace real quick. That's gonna be our best in slot magic for a long while <laughs> until we get probably void mage. Um, maybe down the line we can get infinity or even 
Dagon high robes. I was looking at larynx keys. Technically using the key on the chest doesn't give XP. Just getting the key does and the key is untradeable. So that's an idea for something long, long in the future. So now that we've got a little bit more magic bonus, no, there's no wizard top spawn anywhere, by the way, I checked. But um, we're going to head back and kill us some golems and try to get that third and final piece of the mace. Finally. Finally. I don't know why I expected this to only take like an hour or two hours, but we're like 10 to 12 hours into this grind for this mace by now. Alright, so I wasn't wrong about these runes being able to get me to 42 magic because I'm, I'm almost there already. I have some mind runes I can use earth strikes for to get me there. So I kind of got the estimation on the ruins actually pretty spot on, but unfortunately I didn't get the estimation on when I would get this drop spot on. It's a 1 in 150 uh, drop, and I've killed at least 100 of these things. I thought maybe I'd get a little bit lucky. Unfortunately, that's not the case. I have been here for two hours plus I think another like 30 minutes before that, so about two and a half hours killing these, and uh, yeah, I still have yet to get that last mace piece i've been spending over an entire day on this grind for this this one singular best in slot that i'll have for probably a month or so and i, I didn't expect it to take this long honestly i'm debating if it was even worth it at this point but you know might as well finish up the grind while we're here we already have two out of three of the pieces that can't stop now no matter what so um Let's do this. Hopefully we don't go too dry on this uh, mace piece and sooner or later I'm going to have to go collect more chaos runes out in the fucking wilderness. Uh, so that's not going to be too fun, but uh, I I'm likely going to have to repeat that very soon here. So We just got 42 magic, the requirement for void. Um, we still have about 196 cast of earth strike left before we're gonna have to go back and get some more. All right, that's it for the ruins pretty much. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and collect chaos only next time. But first I'm gonna actually, we have an extra 823 shards I don't need here. So I'm gonna sacrifice 750 and try to get some more of those pick lock boxes, lock boxes, whatever they're called. I'm gonna try a new little manip in there, possibly see if I can log out in there and um, basically hop over to a new world and possibly get more of them. I don't know. Just a thought I had. All right, here we go. For the experiment, I could be sacrificing all of these boxes just to see what happens when I log out. Let's see what happens. Good fight. That is what happens when you log out with lock boxes inside the vault. So nobody, please nobody do that because that could have been some good loot. That's now all completely gone and a waste of 750 shards got some more runes and i'm heading out i'm gonna go ahead and do some more agility just while i can i really want to try to get that lock pick and that red berry pie so i'm gonna grind a few more agility levels here and slowly get my way up to possibly 57 so i got a beginner clue step from the tramp himself and he wants me to mine him an iron ore Unfortunately, I can't trade XP for a tradable item like an iron ore, so my plan right here is to basically just mine this thing, hope that I can drop it, and then give him the iron ore I got earlier from a lockbox that I had in my bank here. Oh, wow. That's not completely useless. Kind of. I really hope it doesn't take that long to get this piece, but uh, you never know. I'm going to go ahead and defensive cast now as well because, you know, I've already hit what magic level I really need right now. Um for the main thing and I do need some defense XP so you know why not at least use some of these ruins for some nice defense XP finally finally I don't know how this happened but I got both a baronite guard and a beginner clue scroll in the same loot uh, more importantly though by waiting to pick up that drop earlier I realized I could do this manipulate a force movement I mean I'm just testing things that's not bug abuse please don't report me yeah, so I don't know what the likelihood of rolling a 1 in 100 and 1 in 150 on the same drop was, but anyways, we well deserve this piece. We've been here for literally over a day of playtime almost, I believe, trying to get all three pieces of this stupid mace that's probably useless to everyone else in the game. So, talk about dead content. I have a feeling we're going to be doing a lot of dead content on this account, but I think that is just what makes this more interesting and more enjoyable for myself and, and hopefully for all of you. Let's go ahead and put this mace together and see exactly what we just achieved. 
Ah, uh, shit, apparently I need 1,500 Baronite Shards. I thought it was only 1,000. I only need another 200 more, so this should, this should take me literally, like, five minutes max to get some more Baronite. And then we can actually wield the mace. Sorry, uh, I got your hopes up. I got my own hopes up, um, but, you know. Okay, well, getting the actual 1,500 Shards, because I only had 1,300, um, I got this Ancient Carcanet, which I think is some more kudos, uh, from the Varrock Museum. I mean, one kudo, specifically. This content definitely isn't dead and has wonderful uses, of course. Ooh, there it is. I thought I almost sacrificed that for shards. Finally! This is like a 20-hour weapon right here. It's got plus 40 strength bonus, which is a, obviously a huge upgrade from uh, plus zero strength bonus. So that's wonderful. Also, the plus 40 crush bonus, and it is a four-tick speed weapon making it probably our best in slot for quite a while. This is going to be able to allow us to train much quicker to kill decently medium level NPCs, much quicker, all of that good stuff. So I'm really looking forward to testing this thing out, especially as long as it took me to get. As well, I'm gonna look at this beginner clue, see what it says. Ah, Falador. I'm actually gonna go straight to Falador and I'm gonna kill some guards with my new mace as well anyways. I'm gonna see if I can just pull a couple random lucky medium clues out of those guards and do them for some adamant equipment, possibly an adamant axe, adamant pickaxe, all of those are upgrades as well. Even, I believe, a U longbow is my best in slot range uh, weapon and I can get ice arrows for that. So I'm going to be trying to pull a U longbow from a medium as well. And then, of course, there's power amis, strength amulets trimmed from medium clues. So I think medium clues are going to be like our mid-tier upgrade for a lot of the slots we have yet to complete. All right, let's start slaying some guards with our brand new mace. Look how decked out we are right now. This is some legendary gear right here. 100% certified fresh. We just got 40 strength just now. Still trying to kill these guards. We've got 30 to 40 strength somehow without a medium clue drop. I think we're well over the drop right now. I just wanted to get one probably for today's episode just to see if we could even complete it because there are a lot of steps we can't complete and as well I'm not doing eclectics I'm not getting hunter up because you can't actually kit an impling jar there's no way to get a free impling jar that doesn't require GP or XP besides of course I think those very first few six impling jars you get from Puro Puro which those are eventually going to break anyway so in reality, those aren't going to last me long enough to catch a lot of eclectic emplings. I'm going to have to catch random eclectics when I do get the hunter level around Gilinor because you can barehand them 10 levels higher without a jar, but you can't barehand them in Piro Piro. You can only barehand them into a jar in Piro Piro. So, I mean, we're kind of stuck with mainland eclectic emplings, which are going to be kind of difficult to find, not impossible to find, but it's still a, a one in, I believe, 25 to pull a medium out of one. So the amount of time on average, I should be getting more medium clues just killing these guards here than hunting around Gilinor for eclectic emplings, which as well I would need to get, I believe, uh, 60 for bare hand eclectics. We're gonna be stuck, I think, killing a lot more guards than I expected, and I don't know if that's gonna get old or not. As well, I wanted to get easy clues done, and I might go and train my range on men for those, just because I need to train my range up to 42 anyways for void. So I'm probably gonna try and just get one medium clue for today's episode and leave it there. Hopefully, I'll get a clue scroll off one of these things in the next, like, uh, day or so. We'll find out soon. I don't know if I've been killing these guards for three hours trying to get a singular medium clue that I likely can't even complete. I think I've been killing them at least a few of the three hours. I don't know if it's all of them, but I'm getting pretty fucking tired here. So I might just call it quits after this guard. I've killed like well over double the drop rate, maybe even triple. We're at 42 strength, almost 42 attack as well already off these guards without a singular medium clue. Uh, I'll be back on and try and do some more of this in a bit there it is <clears throat> finally that has to be like at least 500 of these things like i've been killing these for hours and hours and hours i just logged back in let's see can we even do the step 
<laughs> nope. Of course we can't. <laughs> That's 42 attack. So we've reached our attack, strength, and magic goal now. So let's go for some defense. Why not? It's been about an hour since we last spoke. 36 defense now. Haven't got a medium clue yet again. I've gotten blood ruins, weed, um, everything that's still a 1 in 128 drop chance except for a medium clue. So that's just my luck. That's how it is. I'm getting a little tired of doing this, but we are coming up close on our goal. Once I hit 42 defense, I will be leaving here for quite a while. And I'll be going to get some range up on some men for easy clues. Uh, my idea with that is that I want to get 10 trout from easy clues. And you roll between, I believe, 6 and 10 noted trout sometimes um, on easy clues. Pretty common drop. And why I want that specifically is for Death Plateau. I believe if I get two pairs of the Sherpa's boots and don't actually buy the climbing boots after the quest and drop them whenever Dunstan repairs them, etc etc i get a free pair technically of climbing boots which would be my best in slot boot for this account so um i'm gonna go ahead and get my low level range up on some men just to see if i can you know get really lucky get an easy clue and get that reward if not i'll be going for that in a future video but uh i think i'm gonna be doing that to about 42 range on men but also that means i'm gonna have to go pick up bronze arrow spawns in the wilderness again uh, and just gather at least probably 2,000 of those things um, before I can start training range up to 42. So this whole account so far is definitely a struggle, but I've learned a lot from it. I'm enjoying it. So speaking of enjoying it, I'm not enjoying killing guards as much right now. So I'm actually going to go bank all my stuff. And, and I did get over 50 agility earlier, so I can now use the Faldor course since I'm already over here. I decided, you know, I might as well take a break from killing some guards and get some more agility up because agility is always good. We're going for graceful, kind of. And once again, the run energy region is super important for an account like this, any Iron Man account for that matter. So let's go ahead and do that. We're just 90 more marks of grace off of graceful already, and we're 58 agility. Um, I've decided to finally go back and grind maybe possibly another medium clue and get to 42 defense here and then after that I'll probably try the red berry pie manip. It probably won't work but you know it's been a goal this entire video so we might as well finish it off on a test later on seeing if I can actually complete knight's sword with a requirement of 59 agility and 39 thieving for such a simple f2p quest so by the way that right there is a one in like 900 drop. Yeah, and I still can't get another medium clue. <laughs> this is fun. And right after I said that, we got a medium clue drop. About time, thank you very much. Now let's see if we can even do it. Center of the desert mining camp. <laughs> you know, I have another account that's done like over 200 medium clues recently and I've never gotten this step yet. So to do this, I'm going to have to do at least part of Tourist Trap. I think I can do at least up to the part um, that it's asking. Oh wait, yeah, I can't even enter the desert. Or, or can I? I actually thought of a new way to enter the desert on this account, other than waiting for a Narda scroll um, that I was talking about earlier, and that is the Eagle's Peak quest. Now there's a 45 strength requirement, I believe, to maybe not maybe not to actually get there but to get out of there so um yeah we're gonna have to get 45 strength now 26 thief or 26 hunter i believe for eagle's peak i'm it's gonna add a little twist to the ending of this episode i did not expect but i say we do it we try and get eagle's peak done um and we get the hunter up with only bird snares because that's all we can use and then we get up to that step in Tourist Trap where we just kill the guy for the key. And I think we'll be able to get in the mining camp and, and do that portion of the quest. Now, I don't know if we'll need the desert robes because I, I don't know if I can get desert robes is the fucked up thing either. Let's see. Desert robes. Yeah, they're only sold in shop. 
What happens if you try to enter without desert robes and tourist trap? I think you can you can enter without them. You just can't exchange them for the slave robes. I think that's the only thing you need them for is to exchange them for slave robes. So technically, I think I can barely get up to this step in the quest of tourist trap. And that's what we're going to do here in a little bit. Now, first, I'm going to actually train my range and finish my defense, maybe on some men for some easy clues. Since I do want to keep this one, I don't really want to um, discard it because uh, it's been taking me forever to get a medium clue. Honestly, I think getting the the hunter up to uh, whatever the wreck is, it's like 26, 27, 28 for Eagle Speak, something like that with bird snares would be faster than killing another like 500 of those guards over there. All right, let us slaughter some men all the way until 42 defense, and then I'll go grab some. Hey, while I'm here, actually, there are hay bales. I need a needle at some point. Let's search these hay bales. First try. <laughs> it's a 1 in 10 shot, but still, first try. Here we go, the first clue scroll. Uh, 39 defense, so probably going to get a fair bit of these. Um, I can't do that. I can't get a steel med helm. Already another clue scroll. Let's see. Hopefully th the following steps we can do as well. It's just kind of a gamble, but you know what? It's a gamble we have to take because I want that damn 10 trout really bad. Really, really bad. And I think I jinxed myself. I can't get a black axe till I do a few more clues. A coif you can get from an easy casket, so already these two things I can only get from easies. I would have to do more clues to get the first two items for that, so we're back to dropping that and heading back to Edgeville already yet again on a second step of an easy clue, so. What the fuck is this thing? <laughs> I've never been up here and I accidentally clicked the ladder and I see this. What is this place? So confused. Where am I? What is the purpose of this? That's where I should have um, gone and done the mushroom at, to be honest. That would have been a perfect place. Uh, another clue scroll. So I might not have to get 45 strength right away to actually uh, get out of the Eagle's Peak Den inside the desert. I might be able to boost it. No, okay. It, I think it's 2% plus 1, so 2% of, of 42 isn't enough anyways, but I could get like 44 um, and just boost the extra level if I didn't want to, you know, waste some time. I know it's one strength level, but just a thought I had um, while looking into the Eagle's Peak transport system, you apparently can boost to push the boulder out of the way. Another thought obviously is if I get a Dr. Hyde random um, in the next, you know, whenever, uh, then I could use that strength potion and boost from where I'm at even now. So. Before I go for straight up 45 strength, I am going to just uh, get the 42 range first on the men. Oh, two-step clue. Nice. Pickaxe upgrade and some law runes. Not terrible, but really not, not that needed because eventually I'm going to probably get an Addy pickaxe anyway. From medium clues as well, I could get this eventually once I get the essence from Priest and Peril. So not that needed, but a little bit extra of a perk, I guess. Looking further into that strength boost for the Eagle's Peak quest, there's actually a singular spawn of a keg of beer in the Relica Long Haul. So I think I'll be able to pick that up, and that should increase my strength by about 6 at my current level. So I'll easily be able to hit the 45 strength wreck without actually having to train a few more strength levels. Alright, so we just got 42 defense, still not another clue scroll since the last one. So I'm going to go ahead now and uh, loot some of those bronze arrows we saw in the wilderness earlier. I'm going to attempt to get some weight reduction just because I'll be running around picking up those arrow spawns over and over again and maybe I won't need to wait for run ever to regen with my agility level now being like 58 and some, some graceful clothing possibly on. Can't buy the full set yet obviously. But I'm going to go ahead and spend what marks of grace I have. So we ended up getting four pieces, the top, gloves, cape, and headpiece. And I don't think we're going above 20 wilderness. So even if we do lose hardcore status, which isn't a big deal to me, um, I'm not going to lose my graceful, which is the biggest thing. What the fuck? Is this possible? Is this even like a thing? What's happening? Why is every option a baguette? Is that a, is that a real thing? So I've gotten hopefully enough arrows to take me to 42 range now. I think I'm going to head out as well. There's apparently a leather body spawn, but no other real range bonus spawn. And that's in Varrock, so I'm going to go head there next. There it is. Right on that table. You can actually barely even see that. 
but it's gonna give us a little bit of range bonus. Two whole range bonus from that, better than nothing, I guess. So we got a clue scroll and a random both at the same time. Let's see if we can actually do this clue. Ah, looks like we can. All right, let's see what we get from the beginner casket. <laughs> what? I didn't even know that was an, an option. Well, I guess if we ever lose our short bow, we can have another one. All right, let's see, casket. <laughs> another steel pickaxe and a black pickaxe. I guess the pickaxe is like me, but uh, that's that's a that's an upgrade. Black pickaxe, at least it's something. Um, better than the two steel ones I now have, so I'll take it. Another day, another clue. Ah, that's actually really good. Studded chaps. That's that's actually gonna be my best in slot range for quite a while. So I'm definitely taking that. The black plate legs. Now I think those might be useful for a couple of quests. It is gonna be my best in slot melee for now, but I'm not too worried about that. So I could get the iron plate body from damaged armor. And I could get the damaged armor sets from Shazian area. There's an item spawn for that. And it's a one in two chance to make the damaged plate body into an iron plate body. But the bronze full helm, believe it or not, is the item of this clue I cannot get. Fun fact, I actually can't get Artie Cloak solely because there's no way for me to get silk to sell to the silk merchant without exchanging GP or XP for it. I was looking into that earlier because Artie Cloak is a very handy teleport especially for this clue step right here but yeah there's no way for me to get arty cloak solely because i cannot get a piece of silk of all things oh my god of course we got oh wait a second willow short bow that's actually a huge upgrade but damn if only that was trout not salmon that's what i was really looking forward to but i'll take it man willow short bow holy shit i forgot that was even a chance of a drop from this thing that might be our best in slot for a very long time. The problem with this one is though, I can't really get any arrows to fire with it. Last Man Standing gives Addy and Ruin arrows. And everything else gives like like ice arrows. That requires a U short bow. So I can't really use any arrows besides these bronze ones for training with this bow, unfortunately. But it is an upgrade. I'll take it. Let's go back to Edgeville to try and finish off 42 range. We'll probably get a few more clues along the way. Oh, right near the crystal chest. If only I had a crystal key. The only way, fun fact, I think I can get a crystal key is if I actually pull both parts from a mystery box. So uh, yeah, that's probably never going to happen. But uh, fun fact, by the way, while I'm up here, Megan over here can make a dance and you can make her dance. But it's not a stall. Yeah, it's pretty useless, but uh, if you ever want to dance without having to click the emote that is how you do it guys that's all honestly useless to me because i can never do horror from the deep another fun fact molten glass i believe i don't think i can get molten glass as well i don't think i can get the swamp paste oh yeah we can do this one if we're really lucky we could pull a power ammy trimmed but that's like a crazy drop rate so probably not Oh man, abandoned mine, which I cannot yet get to because I have not done Priest in Peril. Unfortunate. Another way to get this is, I guess, through a rusty sword, but that's a 1 in 24 chance. Another way to get this is through a beginner casket. So this one's looking pretty impossible for now. Not that impossible, but impossible enough to not want to waste my time on it and just get a new one. While I was in Falador, I decided to go for another large agility hiatus here, and I think I now almost have enough tokens for full graceful. I thought I had five less tokens than I do now, but apparently I had 33 marks of grace banked. So actually, this is gonna be full graceful, I believe. 60 for the legs and 40 for the boots, and we will have full graceful, which is super great to have. Hey, 15 wood cutting off a canoe. I'll take it. Steel med home looks like is actually going to be impossible to get, so <laughs> I came back from that one step clue and this guy's already ragging my spot, man. He's actually about to die. If he tries to run away, I'm gonna I'm gonna pin him off. Damn it, he's eating. <laughs> he's got food. Fuck, we're gonna have to hop worlds. This guy crashed me, man. Can't even leave my min spot for more than five minutes and it's already gone. So I found a weird graphical bug, please don't ban me. 
Um, while I was ranging these men, I was always trying to right click my arrows to pick them up before new arrows popped up from sometimes a man will drop bronze arrows. I didn't want to pick up the arrows that the men dropped, but it looked like I was picking up the five pile of arrows. So what I realized is as soon as a new pile of arrows spawns, your character will graphically pick up the larger pile of arrows. But in reality, even if it looks like you're picking up five arrows and you only have one arrow underneath that, you'll pick up one arrow and then the one arrow will be left on the ground to look like one arrow, but it will actually be five arrows. So technically you can do this with another account like I'm doing here, and you could even make 10,000 coins look like one coin on the ground, even though it's completely useless. I thought it was a cool little niche thing I found. Power Amy T. Wizard Hat T, what the fuck? I really don't need that, um, but thanks, I guess. Once again, we're going to have to drop literally an easy clue on the ground and head back to train some range. But first, I do have no more cooldown on my minigame teleport, so I'm going to go ahead and buy the rest of the Graceful. And yeah, that's going to be a full Graceful set completed on this account in episode one. I wasn't expecting that. Eggs, boots, cool. Two tokens remain, but we have it. Uh -huh. And it's one we can do. A clue we can do. Hoo hoo. I haven't done one of these in like 10 years. I think I gotta remember what she looks like. Oh, she's too fast, man. Get her. There we go. There's nothing more satisfying than putting women in cages, am I right? This is so weird. Whoever thought of this um, has a very creative mind. What's the reward for? Ah, uh, that's, that's pretty worth it. It's hard for me to get sapphires. I'll take that. All right, we got our casket. Black long swords. 14K cash. Can you even get that from a clue? Jesus Christ, I actually need that a lot for like charter ships. I didn't even know that it could give you 14k cash from an easy clue. That's actually pretty fucking nice. Holy shit. I've killed like three of these things. I've already got another clue. Damn. So once again, we're going to have to drop this. Um, another clue. Let's go. No. 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 They say he has the voice of an angel. Just want to get... 42 but instead i'm doing this clue i really i'm getting tired of doing clues but we're gonna do this clue i just got another step and it's over here a good thing it's only 500 yards from any port of entrance in this godforsaken continent called Zaya. Just a little bit more, just a few more steps. We've traveled the world, across a continent and back. Give me a two step. Nope, we have another clue step. And of course, it's one I can't do. Oh my god. Only way I can get a hard leather body is from a reward casket beginner. Same with the leather chaps and I have neither of those things and there's no way I'm gonna pull both of those things from a beginner and more importantly there's no way in hell that I'm even gonna bother so we're dropping that I'm sorry that's no uh-uh a fourth step easy and of course unless there's a way to get these items I highly doubt it because there's three of them we don't have any of them bronze dagger I knew I shouldn't have sold that dagger Looks like we're doing this one, guys. Hey, there's a broken arrow spawn. I was, I, I had a theory with broken arrows earlier, but they're not even stackable, so they're really kind of terrible to even go about trying to repair. All right, so there is the iron full helm, and the last thing we're gonna need is just that golden ring. Now I could do the pirate's treasure quest, which eventually I'll do anyways, but uh, there's a much quicker route to get this gold ring right over here in the KBD lair because I'm already over here anyway so if you didn't know me and the KBD have like some sort of alliance actually we're, we're, we're good friends so hey there's an uncut sapphire here as well might as well pick that up 
we don't fuck with each other. We just leave each other be. I wonder what's in these chests over here. There's my gold ring, by the way. We've got the gold ring, the bronze dagger, iron full helm, black battle axe. Is that useful for- I do need the law runes. 42 range right there. So we got nine clue scrolls done, some unique items, some not so great items, but overall I'm pretty satisfied. Eventually I'm going to have to come back to easy clues for the tin trout for death plateau. But for now, the combat grind for this episode is over. All that is left to do is get hunter up, eagle's peak, and finally test the red berry pie manip and see if we can finish the rest of this medium clue. So to start that hunter grind off, I'm going to go ahead and just run over to Virok Museum. Once I get nine hunter, I believe I can do copper long tails and I can get bird snares over at the Isle of Souls. I'll pick up some bird snares from the spawn location and I think I'm going to have to bird snare all the way to 27 hunter, which is required for Eagle's Peak Quest. Now, normally you would do like butterflies with a butterfly net and butterfly jars, but there's no way I can get to those because I would have to pay for them using GP at the Yanil Hunter Shop. So it looks like we're sticking with bird snares till 27 and looking forward to a hunter grind possibly in the future for eclectic implings for medium clues along the way, just seeing them around. But for now, let's go ahead and get nine hunter and head over to the Isle of Souls. Here we go, let's turn in our natural history quiz for the nice 9 Hunter 9 Slayer. There we go, 1000 XP drops, love it. Got some kudos off that as well. I really desperately needed to get into Pirate's Hideout. Um, I think the requirement that I last saw was 57 agility. We're, we're well past that now, but you know, I'm just, like I said, I'm not doing a lot of wikiing here. I'm just kind of thinking and playing it by ear and I don't really want to look into this too far. I just want to go for it and, and see if I do have the agility level for it. Third time's a charm. Let's get this dungeon completed. Well, not completed, but let's get the lockpick. Actually, yes, we can cross them. Is it gonna be done? Is there any more obstacles? Okay, I think we might make it. Is this it? This is the lockpick spawn. Yes, this is it. Hold I don't know if it's gonna be useful for many things, but you know, there are a few things that require lockpicks in this game. So the fact that we can now actually get to this lockpick spawn, even though it required 57 agility to do so is is phenomenal so super glad we're able to get here all right let's get this red berry pie i fucking deserve it i've spent my life's journey my life's work the last nearly four days practically trying to get the stats to acquire half a red berry pie from the pirates hideout over here so please let there be no more obstacles i've never done this in my life i didn't even wiki it so obviously i didn't know you needed 39th evening in a and a, uh, you know, lock pick to even get in here. So let's, let's see if there's any extra things we find. Maybe like it breaks, the lock picks off in the door and I have to go get more. Maybe there'll be some obstacle. Oh, you failed to pick the lock. It didn't break the lock pick though. You failed to pick the lock, failed to pick the lock, failed to pick the lock. Damn, I'm such a failure in life. Fail, 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 fail. There we go. Okay, that chest does not- I'm not gonna fuck with that anymore. Let's just get our half of a red berry pie. Wait for the other half. Okay, here is the other half. Moment of truth. Nothing interesting happens. Sort your game out, Jagex. Just- just sort it out, please. Is it just every new place that they build now? It just has a giant spanning of land that's completely unnecessary? with giant obstacles and we have to run all the way around this thing to get to the spawn for the bird snare right up here but hey i think uh jagex saw ahead in the future because there is only one bird snare in the entire game and luckily if i made this account a year ago we wouldn't even have access to hunter until like a way higher level so you know jagex knew that there'd be some idiot weird snowflake iron man in the future that only relied basically on item spawns and put this one in the game just for me because they love me so much here it is the only bird snare spawn in the entire world just sitting there for me to take it and oh wow it doesn't even disappear i can just there's no respawn timer oh my god i can get as many of these as i want hell yeah brother give me four like plenty it what it stops me at no, no, don't do that. It stops me at three? 
You thought I was getting a little too greedy. So you made me do a little bit of a drop manip just to get a fourth bird snare. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is bug abuse. Um, good thing the name is covered up with an overlay. Or else we might be getting banned for that right there. That was not intended for me to get four bird snares instead of three. So here we are, catching birds. A very enjoyable activity indeed. That is not mind numbing at all and can be super fun if you make it fun. So it was so not mind numbing that I decided to do two things at once here and that is cutting trees for woodcutting XP and picking up these birds off the snare traps. Bro, I just realized I've been catching crimson swifts this whole time and not copper longtails. That's like half the XP. It said the, said the copper longtail was on the Isle of Souls so I just saw a bird and started putting up a fucking trap next to it. I've been here for like two hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, even though I've wasted two hours here, I went ahead and stayed because I was like two traps away and I got 1900 just now. So now I'm going to move on to tropical wagtails, which are in the Felda Pills area. And, you know, maybe I can get this one right. All right, so we've been chopping some trees, getting some wood cutting for some more canoes, all of that good stuff. And we're just now about to hit the goal for Eagle Speed Quest 2700. This should be it. So I do have to gather the yellow dye from near the farming guild in Zaya. And then I will have to also gather a swamp tar, which I can in Lumberge Swamp. So let's go ahead and get started on this quest. All right, so here's our swamp tar. Luckily, this quest calls for swamp tar and not swamp paste. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and run to Port Serum and run all the way to our favorite place in the game, Zaya, run all the way across it to over here somehow. Even though I hate this place, they do give free candles, so I'll give them that. Yes, free die. And I can't make the die because I have to give the witch coins to make the die, so this is really our only way to get die besides the purple die near Artie that spawns on the ground. So these are um, acquirable because, once again, they are untradeable. This quest can therefore be completed. This was the only part that kind of worried me, but, you know, also, I look awesome with this on. So it's just an added perk. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we get a free box trap, and this is probably the only one I can ever get, so I better hold it tightly. What the fuck is going on here? What are they adding to the game? Wow, what the... Ooh, shiny... Ooh, temporary game mode that's gonna go away in six weeks. Fuck that. I'm not playing that, by the way, if you haven't noticed. I'm not hopping on that trend. All right, here we go. Quest completion. And now we can also catch swamp lizards once I do Priest and Peril, of course, once I get those essence. Back on track, let's make our way down to Relica. Because like I said, I'm gonna get that keg of beer to boost over 45 strength so I can push the boulder into the desert. And so we can finally do this clue scroll step here and get into the mining camp start tourist trap. Now this is going to be a little bit tricky because I don't have access to water skins. The only way you can get water skins is if you actually kill monsters for them or buy them from a shop. But I have a little workaround for that once again. So I'm not too worried. I almost got scared because all these other kegs were objects. But there is one real keg here. But can I pull it off the table? No! I have this insane idea right now. What if I just start the quest, then talk to the drinker? Don't tell me it's this easy. Yes! Ha 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 ha! Okay, whatever. Well, I got my keg of beer. I did it. No, it's not a real keg of beer! What the fuck? I can't even drink this thing! There's no drink option on it! Why does it say there's a spawn of this item in the long haul? It's not even the same type of item. Fucking wiki again, man. Are you serious? Alright, please boost my stats. I'm always coming up with these genius ideas, so maybe this will somehow work. No, it doesn't even boost me! There's no other way for me to get a keg, either. What does this give me? Oh, wait! No! That actually gets me to 45? Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I thought beer didn't get me to 45. Maybe I'm wrong. Or is it just the beer tankard? The beer tankard actually gives more strength than a regular beer? Okay. I like this game mode. I'm literally learning something new, like, every hour. This is amazing. 
So the beer tankard actually gives more of a boost than a regular beer, apparently. The calculation is totally different. There's a base level plus two rather than a base level plus one. I get another plus one just for my strength level. So yeah, this gets me to exactly 45 strength. Super interesting, actually. Because without that, I would have to do a lot more work, train some strength. And so we're going to be using a beer tankard. Okay, listen to this. We're going to be using a beer tankard to fly an eagle to get into the desert to then push a boulder to then not use any water skins to then start tourist trap to then kill a guy outside to get the key for tourist trap to then look inside this crate for a medium clue. Let's go baby, fly me home. Now that is looking good. Well, is the boulder only to get in or get out? Hold on, can I just exit through here? I'm scared. Okay, so I do actually need 45 strength to get up down this thing here. How do I get out? Don't tell me I'm gonna have to get a NAR to teleport first. I'm going to have to get a NAR to teleport scroll first, climb up here, then push this boulder out of the way to use this transport system. That's the only way. Then I'll be able to return to the desert. That's the only way I can get out of here as well. God damn it. My plan. See, this is what happens. Your plans don't always work out. I'm not giving up on this clue yet. At least maybe for this episode, but I really want to try to do this. So... I'm going to have to do some easy clues anyway for the 10 trout for Death Plateau later on in a further grind. So hopefully, you know, before I get that 10 trout, I'll also be getting a few of those Narda teleport scrolls because those could be pulled from easy clues as well. And then I could maybe go and push that boulder out of the way and return to the desert as many times as I like. So this isn't over yet. I'm not giving up yet on this. I'm not going to drop it yet. I refuse to drop it. This step one day will be complete, mark my words. Instead though, let's take a look at our final puzzle to see if it can be solved, and that is Knight's Sword. I wanna see if Thurgo will take the two halves of the Redberry Pie, or even one half, since apparently you can put pizzas together, but not pies. <clears throat> Somebody fix this. All right, moment of truth, drum roll please. No. No. Eat it. Eat the pie. Eat it. Just take it from me. Fat son of a bitch. You won't even take the half of the redberry pie, and I can't combine the damn thing. Please, send help. It's failure after failure with this account. Nothing works. He won't even... You would think there would be some noob failsafe because some noob would go like this. Oh shit, I just ate half my pie. Can I still use this on this guy? And then he would take it. But no, even though this is one of the first quests ever made, probably not really, but it's an F2P quest, there's no noob failsafe on this quest. It's a joke. Fuck you, Thurgo, and fuck your red berry pie. What did we achieve today? A lot of useless uniques. Um, we got full graceful somehow. We got 42 base stats for Void. By the way, Void's going to be in the next episode, but it's not just going to be me getting Void. There's going to be a lot of unique, cool content. Hey, maybe we'll even get the 10 trout I need for climbing boots from an easy clue scroll. And then maybe we'll even get a Narda teleport and finish this medium, this godforsaken medium clue here that is so hard to complete. As well, I found out today that kegs of beer, not all kegs of beer, can even be drinkable. I also found out today that you can't give half of a red berry pie to Thurgo. And I found out that there is a hell of a lot of chaos ruins residing in the wilderness that nobody touches whatsoever. But the best part was the Baronite Mace. That was a complete waste of time, and no one who is a sane normal account should ever go for this thing because it's totally undervalued for the 16 hour grind it takes to actually acquire one of these things that's equivalent to a ruined scimitar in stats. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, as well a lot of positives came out of this because we learned a lot, I'm really enjoying this. Once again, this is my more casual series, so I am working on something bigger on the side, that's why these videos will be farther and fewer in between, even though it looks like it doesn't take me much time to make these. 
even this account right here almost has three and a half days of play time because i'm literally doing this in like a piss locked iron man mode i'm picking trash up off the ground to level my stats to get places hell i can't even enter the desert yet so this is going to be a very intriguing series for myself. I had a very enjoyable time, and like I said, I learned a lot of new things along the way on this journey today, and I hope you did all as well. That's why I'll be coming out with an episode 2, and probably around the first half of February, and like I said, there's going to be a lot of more grinding for more untradables like Void, and much, much more. So please, stay tuned for episode 2 of Scavenger Man Mode, whatever you want to call this, I haven't even decided on a name yet. And also, if you have any tips or any theories about how I could get some of these items that I later decided that were impossible to get, please let me know in the comments below. Your help on all of this is greatly, greatly appreciated and it will be contributing to the overall finale of this build which i haven't even decided what that is yet but it will be a thing remember if you guys enjoyed today's video give me a subscription here on youtube it really helps me out and as well i'll put my social medias in the description below i actively use my twitter and discord so i hope to see you guys there thanks again for watching and i'll see you all soon